Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 4th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Let me start with one correction. I showed this photo in yesterday's video and I called it a solitary sandpiper, but actually it's a lesser yellow legs. So not quite as dark on the underwing and also you can see the longer uh, yellow legs and feet sticking out behind. Well, the weather today was rainy and foggy with a somewhat strong northerly wind. So I did go out to the park just for a little bit to get a walk in and pick through the birds, but there was no raptor count conducted today just because of the unfavorable conditions. If we look at eBird, I was at the park for about an hour and uh, had 33 species, so nothing too exciting. Did have a couple first of years that I'll talk about in a second. So I had a couple highlights, including two Sora calling from the marsh, a Wilson snipe, and the new species for the season were greater yellow legs and blue-headed vireo. And there were also quite a few white-crowned sparrows around again. And if we take a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly to mostly cloudy with a high in the low 50s. Winds light and variable, but mostly out of the north. So this will be a day with some sunshine and light northerly winds. So this is actually one of the better looking days coming up. There's a lot of days coming up with stronger northeast winds. So um, I don't know that we'll have a huge flight tomorrow because again, those northerly winds, even though they're light, can still push things like broad wings away from the lake shore. So I'd imagine that tomorrow we'll, we'll see some birds, um, but it won't be a huge day if I had to guess. But it's looking better than most of the days coming up. So uh, if you're looking to get out hawk watching, tomorrow might be the day. For Friday, it's overcast with a high in the low 50s, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, expect light migration. For Saturday, mostly cloudy, high around 50, winds east-northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So again, strong, unfavorable winds, won't be much migration. And since this was a short update and a couple people have been asking, I thought I would show the equipment that I use in terms of binoculars and camera. So the binoculars that I use are the Swarovski EL 8x32. And I got these, I guess, in 2014, paid maybe around $2,100, $2,200, somewhere in that ballpark. They actually uh, discontinued this model last year when the NL series came out. And uh, so this size now is the upper NL series rather than the EL series. So you can still get this 8x32 size and the 10x32 size as well. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, what power I use. Again, they're 8 power. People, um, I think a lot of people see me identify birds far away and they assume that I must use really high power binoculars. But actually for counting hawks, you want lower power because you want the bigger uh, field of view. And as you get better at it, you don't really need the higher magnification. And I like this size just because they're so small and compact. The other thing to keep in mind with binoculars is there's a big difference between a $200 pair of binoculars and a $2,000 pair of binoculars. And they might have the same specs in terms of like being 8x32 or 8x42. Um, but really the difference is just in the quality of the glass. So when you're spending thousands of dollars, you're getting really high quality glass. Um, you're getting more coatings. So overall, it's just a sharper image. And I'd say that's that's the main difference, just how sharp the image is. So you can look at something really far away and it just looks sharper. You can make out more detail. And for my camera, I use a DSLR. I use a Canon 7D Mark II body. And the lens I use is the Canon 400 millimeter F5.6 lens. So it's not a zoom lens, it's just a prime lens at 400. And when I take photos, I'm always using autofocus. Manual focus is actually broken on this. And um, I always shoot in full manual mode, meaning I'm choosing the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Um, so, and the reason I do that is because when I'm photographing a raptor in the sky, um, I want the exposure to be correct for the bird. If you're using any kind of automatic mode, including auto ISO, then you're gonna get a different exposure on the bird when it's in front of a cloud versus when it's in front of blue sky. So I don't want that. So always leave the camera just on uh, aperture of 7.1. The um, shutter speed I leave in the ballpark of one 2000th per second, sometimes a little faster, sometimes a little slower. 
And then I just adjust the ISO. You know, I take some photos. If they look too dark, you bump up the ISO. If it's uh, too bright, you, you drop down the ISO. It's very simple. And then as long as your conditions aren't changing too much, you, uh, you're good to go. And one more thing to point out as I always shoot in raw and then I process my photos using Photoshop. So um, you can get away with using JPEG, but if you shoot raw, it just gives you a little more leeway when you're editing your photos, especially if, um, if your photos came out really too bright or too dark. So it just gives you a little more flexibility. And one more thing is I use back button focus, which means um, when you normally take a photo on a camera, when you hold the shutter button down halfway, that's how you focus. I disabled that and I use, um, I, the way I focus is by using my thumb on these buttons over here. And I use two of them. So the AF on button and the one with the star on it. And the difference between them is the AF on button is center point focus only. It activates the center focus point, which is the most sensitive. And that's good if I have um, a duck sitting on the water and I'm telling my camera that's the exact thing I want to focus on. The other one I have set to activate all focus points and track the object. So that's really good. Let's say you have a warbler flying over and it really only works if you have somewhat of a contrasting background. So if it's a bird against the sky, it works great. If it's a bird against the ground or some other non-contrasting background or something perched in a tree, it doesn't really work. But anytime I have a quick flyover, I'm using that button that activates all the focus points and tracks the object. All right, that's it for today. If you have any questions about my binoculars or camera, feel free to ask in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and please subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.